I think what I wanted to, um, to teach the students is the importance of close reading. Why is it important to do close reading in a, in a class? And what does it look to do close reading in context? So when you have this strain, you, you're forced to look closely at the text to produce it. In, in Zola's text, the, the train is a metaphor because Zola exaggerates the proportion, but it's also a metaphor for progress, for history, for women, because the train has a women name, for sexuality and desire, and also for human bestiality. I would say that the three main metaphor, or three main concepts that the train symbolizes in this text. A deux yeux couplés, d'une élégance fine et géante, avec ses grandes roues légères réunies par des bras d'acier, son poitrail est large, ses reins allongés so et puissants. The train was based on Zola's description. It's not um, a real train or not a completely um, functional train, if you would say. We look closely at the description, and in those lines, in those excerpts, there are some um, parts of the train that are exaggerated by Zola. So, for instance, if you look at the chimney, um, there are a lot of description of that chimney, more than other parts of the train. So we exaggerated the proportion of it. And the same applies, I don't know if you can see it, to, to the whistle, because Zola focuses a lot about on the sound. So what we decided is to really build a metaphor based on the text, not a real train, and which is something that is very strange is by exaggerating the proportion, we ended up with the real train. So if you look closely at at pictures of the train at uh, the end of the 19th century that really look similar. The chimney looks this high. So you can really see that the way Zola um, wrote his book is very similar to the train he was watching. So I would say the, the most interesting part in the project was when we were in the room with uh, two students of mine and the members of the CID, there were three. We were looking at description in French and in English from the text, and we were reading those descriptions to the engineer. And they were trying to, in a way, translate what we were saying into, um, into an object, into code. So we were really reading sentences, art, and aiming at translate it into an object. And that, that was really interesting, because I remember um, Dean Vince was saying that all this process is a translation. Uh, Zola was translating the images of Trani So when he was um, young. Then uh, the text was translated in English, and then this English text was translated into a computer program that ended up printing a 3D train. It's really um, impressive here at the CID how you can transform a literary object into something that's, um, that's real, that's really existing. Um, when I was a PhD student at Cornell, um, there was a famous writer, Vladimir Nabokov, who was always asking his student during the first uh, day of class to draw the hat in the first page of uh, Gustave Flaubert's novel, Madame Bovary. So I think this is another version of this experimentation, but this uh, project is only possible because we have a, a space like here at Yale where you can build um, a model with 3D, but also with other very different material. Et maintenant, ce n'était plus qu'une queue d'astre incendiant la nuit. C'était un panache de fumée noire, épaisse, qui salissait le grand frisson pâle du ciel. Déjà le train fuyait, en ne montrant plus de lui dans les ténèbres, que les trois feux.